Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, turn discuss further into hyperbolic functions and now look at graphing cosh of x or hyperbolic cosine of x. Again, I'm basically revisiting my earlier video because I realized I should have done a bit more. So let's just jump right in. So I recently made a video going over the graph of cosh of x, but I realized that, that I didn't adequately cover its behavior at large uh, at larger scales. Thus, I've made the previous video unlisted. And I'm remaking that video right now. And you can see that unlisted right here. So it won't show up in search or whatnot, but you can still uh, access it from its original link there. And this is where I left off uh, in that video. But So now I'm going to just redo that one and then continue with a different scales here because it's uh, the cosh x has a really... Yeah, unique um, uh, behavior at large scales. So let's d derive the graph of cosh x again. So we call that, uh, if we just let y equals to cosh of x, and this equals to, by definition, as I showed in my earlier video, this is just e to the x plus e to the negative x, like that, divided by 2. And then first thing I did uh, before is just going to take the limit as x approaches infinity of of y, which is cos x equals to limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x. And now here I'm going to uh, flip that over. So it writes 1 plus e to the negative, uh, I mean 1 plus e to the x, just get rid of that negative sign. 2, and again, let's put a note like this. Note as before. Uh, recall that the exponent property e to the negative x is equal to e to the x, like that that in a circle. And you can learn more by watching my earlier videos on exponent and exponent laws. I'll put that in the link in the description below. Yeah, so thus what we have here is, well, this e to the x is e to the, to the infinity goes to, well, just infinity. And now here we have 1 divided by e to the uh, infinity is going to be, well, 1 divided by infinity. This is 1 divided by infinity, which approaches 0. So what we have is infinity plus 0 divided by 2. That's just infinity still, like that. Yeah, infinity divided by 2 is still <laughs> infinity. And now likewise do the same for uh, the negative side. So limit as x approaches negative infinity of y. This equals to limit as x approaches negative infinity. And now what we're going to do is, because it's a negative sign here, I'm going to flip these. So then this is going to be, uh, well, the e to the x is going to be 1 over e to the negative x, and then plus yeah, plus right here, this is e to the negative x, flip that. Well, actually, that one remains the same, e to the negative x. Because we have a negative sign there, I just want to get rid of uh, negative infinities. So 1 divided by e to the negative negative infinity, that just means 1 to the e to the infinity. So then this becomes 1 divided by infinity, approaches 0, and then this one here, the negatives cancel, this just approaches infinity, like that. So then we have 0 plus infinity, uh, divided by 2, uh, we're going to just get infinity, positive infinity. Yeah, so thus what we have is a limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of, of uh, y equals to cosh x. And this just equals to, well, positive infinity, like that. I'll just circle the whole thing, actually, like this. And now what we got to do is find the critical points and you can learn uh, more uh, in more detail in my early video on guidelines to uh, sketching. And I'll put those in the uh, description below as well. So critical points or point like this. And what we'll do is find the, uh, first we're going to do is find the derivative. So y prime equals to, well, it's dy over dx. Uh, this equals to the derivative of this e to the x. That just equals to, well, e to the x. And the other one plus e to the negative x, then we have to use chain rule, derivative of negative x is negative 1, put the negative down, divided by 2. And then this one, recall, this is just by definition cinch of x, like that. And I'm just going to take the second derivative as well, uh, just put it all in one place here. d, uh, yes, y double prime, d, d squared y over dx squared, just that Lebanese notation. Now what we have, take the derivative of this, that's just e to the x. Now we have e to the negative x, uh, there's a negative there, but then the negative goes down, chain rule, this becomes positive over 2, equals to cosh of x, which equals to, well, y. So then what we have is 
um, this y equals to y double prime. I'll circle this one here because that is going to be useful. All right, so now that we have these derivatives and the second derivative, I'm going to do now is find a critical point. So at y prime equals zero to see if we have a slope that is horizontal. What we'll do, set this equal to zero. This equals to e to the x minus e to the negative x over two. And then we could just cancel the two, multiply two by both sides. Two times zero is zero. Cancel this, move this over. We get e to the x equals to e to the negative x. And then we can ln both sides so that we could use the ln property and cancel the e ln e negative x, bring the two, I mean the x and negative x down. So we have x equals to negative x. And then again, we move that over. So for completeness sake, you could see that x is already equal to zero. x plus x equals to zero, which equals to two x. So what we have is x is equal to zero is a critical point there. And then we have y of zero equals to e to the zero plus e to the negative zero, just putting in the cosh function, like that's divided by two. This just equals to, well, one plus one over two. That just equals to two over two. That just equals to one, like that. Yeah, so thus we have a critical point at the point zero as x and one for y, like that. So that's a critical point we need to deal with. And now we know that this is a continuous function, e to the x is, uh, is defined for all x values like that. Now what you want to do is find uh, whether this is a local minimum or local maximum. What we'll do is find the value of y prime left of zero and to the right of zero. So I'll write for uh, x is less than zero. So for this one, what we have is y prime. And I'll just pick a random number left of it. I'm going to write negative 10. Uh, so for this one, I'll just say try x equals to negative 10. It doesn't matter which one you try. So now we have e to the, and then look at this one, x. So that's going to be e to the negative 10 minus, I just want to know what sign it is, e to the negative uh, x, like that, e to the negative negative 10 over 2. This equals to, well, this one, you can flip it over. That's just 1 over e to the 10 minus, and then this one's going to be positive e to the 10, like that, over 2. So now this e to the 10, that's, that's clearly larger than this one. So what we have is uh, this one here is less than this, so this is larger. We're going to have a negative sign like this. So this is going to be, so this is going to be less than 0. Yeah, so we have, uh, yeah, this, this thing is less than 0. So thus y prime is going to be less than 0 for x is less than 0. I'll just uh, circle this like that put this in between better. So that's we have less than zero and then likewise for x is greater than zero because remember that critical point is at x equals zero. So what we'll do is let's just try x equals to 10 just because it's easier to, to uh, deal with. So y, uh, y prime of 10 like this. And so y prime of 10 is equal to e to the, uh, again this is going to be yeah, like this, e to the negative, I mean, uh, e to the positive 10. So e to the 10 minus e to the negative 10, uh, putting it into the cinch function, which is the derivative of cosh. So we have divided by 2. Now what we have is, again, you could uh, see this better, e to the 10 minus 1 over e to the 10. This is obviously going to be greater than this, because you're dividing by a large number over there. So what we have is over 2. This is greater than it, so then this is going to be greater than 0. So this is greater than 0. I'll write this here down, less than 0 for completeness sake as well on this side. So thus what we have is y prime is greater than 0, like that. So what we have is thus, if we were to draw this out like this. This is going to be our x curve. And then if this is a critical point 0, we have y prime less than 0 here. And then we have y prime greater than 0 here. So this means that the slope is going down like this. And then, then it increases upwards. So this is a uh, local, yeah, local minimum, like that. Minimum. 
yeah, just write it a bit better. So it's so again, it's going downwards and then going upwards there. And also for now for concavity, we have to look at the second derivative and we note that y double prime equals to, well that just equals to y, as I showed above here, and that just equals to cosh of x. So it just equals to y, which equals to e to the x plus e to the negative x, like that over two. But note that what we have here, e to the x is greater than zero. In fact, it's uh, greater than, actually I was gonna say one, but no, yeah, it's greater than zero. You can't have a negative one there, and also e to the negative x is greater than zero. You can't have it negative. So what we have is, well, y double prime is always greater than zero, like that. So you can't even get a critical point out of that one there. So what we have is, is then the x, this is the, uh, at that critical point, x equals to zero here. Then we have, on this side, we have it positive. I'll actually move this downwards like this. So we have it concaving up. It's concave uh, up. And also on this side, this is concave up as well. And that's because y double prime is greater than zero on both sides of this critical point, even at the critical point. It's still greater than zero. Yeah, in fact, if you plug that in, e to the zero, zero plus e to the negative zero is just gonna be, well, one plus one over two equals to one. So thus, we can put this all together. Yeah, so thus we could put this all together right here. And if we draw the x, y axis like this, x, y, we have the critical point at zero, one. So this is zero, and that is one there. Let's put this as zero, one, like that. And then we have it concaving up and going to infinity. And then likewise, on the left side, concaving up and going to infinity. And this is our function. Uh, y equals to cosh of x. Very, very interesting. And now let's compare with a parabola as in the uh, original remake, uh, original video of this. And you uh, compare with the parabola x squared like that and cosh of x. So what we have is, this is in uh, red, is, is the hyperbolic function. It is, starts at the zero, one as opposed to zero, zero at the origin. And then it goes past, it crosses it, and then crosses it back again. So it's more broad initially, and then more steep. Like that, this is a, just the regular scale over there. Notice how the parabola starts off at the origin, and then is steeper than the hyperbolic cosine function. Yeah, but then broadens out. So initially the parabola is steeper, and then it goes to uh, the opposite side, like that. And then likewise, the um, cosh function is more broad than more steep. But after realizing the, yeah, so this is when I started uh, deciding to remake this video. So after realizing that the behavior of the curves uh, varies greatly at larger scales, I decided to revisit this video. So now if I go to Desmos calculator, I'll just go play around with it right here. Yeah, so just loading. So let's just click projector mode. And notice what we have here. What you could do is if you change the scale here, if you just uh, pinch the uh, vertical axis, notice what we have. So the blue is the, um, yeah, the blue is the parabola, and then the red is the uh, hyperbolic function. Notice as you change the scale, notice how the other one goes, becomes absolutely flat relative. And <laughs> yeah, so this one is actually going really, really, uh, far horizontally, the parabola, but then even if you go to like let's say t a 10,000, 20,000 scale, notice how the cosh function barely moves horizontally. This is only negative 10 there, and then the y is at 50,000. Unreal. And now look, the other one's completely flat. It appears completely flat, the parabola, and then the uh, this one here is yeah, at like 100,000, it's only gone to like 20. Unreal, unreal. And likewise, you can do the same thing on the uh, left side, I think. Let's see what the left side would look like. I'll put this back to normal and just see what happens. I haven't tried this one. Oh, this is. <laughs> Let's go back to it. All right, so I'm back here at the regular scale, small scale. Now let's just go horizontal. I'm going to lock this out like that. 
and zoom out and see what happens when you go horizontal. Actually, whoops, I had to reset <laughs> back here. I was zooming out inside. I got to zoom out, not in. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Like this. Yeah, actually, yeah, nothing special is when you zoom uh, horizontally out like that. Because, yeah, everything just gets squished into it like that. So, yeah, nothing cool there. It's actually pretty cool. Let me just go back to normal here. And then this is the one that's super, super cool. The vertical one. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. So, yeah, that's why we decided to remake it. Because this is actually one of the most useful properties of hyperbolic functions at large scales like that. So here I've taken some screenshots. This is at uh, 0, 200, 400 scale. Notice how it's much different. So notice the difference in steepness there. And then now if you go to 2000, uh, 4000 like that, notice it's getting more and more. The steepness difference is getting much greater. And then here at the 200,000, uh, at this large of a scale, the problem can be viewed as a horizontal line while the cosh x curve is extremely steep and notice how it barely changes again notice how all uh, all I did was change a vertical scale and that cosh fx barely changes horizontally relative uh, r relative to vertically like that but nonetheless cosh fx is defined for all values of x hashtag amazing because uh, as you can still zoom out more and more and more uh, this one still gets larger and larger on the horizontal side so the horizontal one does go to infinity but just that the uh, vertical one goes to <laughs> way higher value. So notice here this one is not at the 10. It crosses the 10 very early there when you change the scale. So yeah, very, very interesting. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this uh, revisiting uh, video, I had to do that. Because again, the ma main property in my view is is that uh, at that large scale where, it, where it's still a curve, but it's pretty much like a vertical, uh, like two-lined uh, vertical yeah, shape. Uh, which is pretty cool. Anyways, it's all for today. Hopefully you learn. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing these notes on Steemit. And make sure to check out my math forums and post some uh, cool math or science related stuff you find. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.